The Henry Ford method of production could be applied to any manufacturing company, and movie studios were manufacturing companies. They manufactured movies that were distributed to theaters and sold to consumers. Kennedy would buy FBO and manufacture movies with the efficiency of a CPA and CFO. However, he did not have the funds to buy the company. So he borrowed money from his father-in-law, Honey Fitzgerald, and from Louis Kirstein, owner of Filene's department store in Boston. An additional chunk of the money came from the Chicago outfit. Its gangster principals had partnered with Kennedy during Prohibition. Having acquired the necessary funds and several unsavory partners, Kennedy bought FBO and immediately began slashing costs. He fired those he considered either superfluous or hangers-on. He next cut salaries. He then began an ambitious program of producing a movie a week. Each one was a low-budget movie that was rapidly distributed. Movies came off Kennedy's assembly line with clock-like regularity and were then quickly shipped to theaters. In 1926, he made a movie a week, each one for no more than $30,000. By contrast, the big studio movie of 1925, Ben-Hur, cost $4 million and took two years to film. Although profitability was his governing principle, Kennedy unexpectedly offered to make a celebratory movie about Charles Lindbergh, whom he regarded as an exemplary Christian hero. Kennedy associate Joseph W. Powell commented that Kennedy was the only Christian in the moving pictures business to offer to do a good job for this very fine young gentleman. Lindbergh turned Kennedy down. It didn't matter because under Kennedy's business plan, FBO's profits continued to soar on relatively small budgets. Among those assisting Kennedy were the cronies with whom he had been doing business for years. They were Ed Durr, who served as a treasurer of FBO, and the ever-present John Ford, Eddie Moore, Pat Scollard, and Charles Sullivan. All were intensely loyal to Kennedy. All put their private lives on hold whenever their boss wanted them. And all of them were amoral enough to go along with anything Joe tried to do, no matter how questionable. Having turned FBO into a highly profitable company, Kennedy was eager to enlarge his holdings. He soon acquired the Keith Albee Orpheum, KAO, chain of theaters. He agreed to keep Edward Albee as president, but soon told him he was worthless and should resign. Albee was so crushed to be forced out of the business he loved that he died shortly thereafter. 